Here is a practice problem uh, using gravity and the momentum principle. And I printed it out and made it a little bit too small, so let me just read it to you. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. A large asteroid comes near the Earth, assuming that the only interaction on the asteroid is due to the gravitational force from the Earth ignoring the Sun and the Moon. What is the momentum of the asteroid after 5,000 seconds? Given the, at t equals zero seconds, the mass of the Earth, the position of the Earth, I'm not going to read, do I have to read that? I don't have to read that. The momentum of the Earth, the mass of the asteroid, the position of the asteroid, the momentum of the asteroid. Okay. So let me just redraw this picture in a generic form and then we can, we can work on it. So suppose I have some axis right here. Let's call this X, Y, and then Z is coming out of the board. That's fine. And the Earth's not at the origin. Let's say instead the Earth is right here. And then here's my asteroid right there. And this isn't according to the picture. I'm just drawing some stuff. So I have a vector location of the Earth. I'll call that uh, R put it right here, R, E for Earth. And then I have a vector location of the asteroid. I'll call that R, A for asteroid. And then I have uh, a momentum of the asteroid. I'll put it like this. And I'll call that P, A, 1. That's the momentum of the asteroid at time t equals 0. And I want to find out what it is after that. So I know that the momentum principle says F net is uh, the change in momentum with respect to time. And so I can write that as P A2, the momentum, the final momentum of the asteroid minus the initial momentum P A1, all of that over delta T. That's the change in momentum. Now if I multiply both sides by delta T, I get P A2, the final momentum minus initial P A1 is equal to F net times delta t. Now I can add PA1 to both sides and I get PA2 equals PA1 plus F net, and this is the net force on A, delta t. Okay, so I know the momentum at time one. I gave that to myself because I made the problem. I know the delta t. I know delta t is 5,000 seconds. And so this only works if the force is constant. So as this thing moves, it's going to change the position. It will change the force. But I don't think it's too terribly bad. Um, it's an approximation to assume that the force is constant. And so we're gonna, that's what we're going to do, um, assuming a constant force. But that means that we need to find the net force. So what force is acting on the asteroid? It's this gravitational force pulling that way. I'll call that Fg. So how do we find the gravitational force? In general, Fg is going to be equal to negative g, mass of the Earth, mass of the asteroid, over the magnitude of r squared r hat. But what's r? It's not the position of this due to some random arbitrary point. We need this vector, r. r is the vector from the Earth to the asteroid. And so you see here that I have a triangle and graphically we can see that the vector r is going to be the final position which is the position of the asteroid minus the initial position which is the position of the earth. So I can find the vector r. Now how do you find the vector r? Let's just, we've got some work to do here. So if I look over here, I don't even want to write this out but I'm going to. r earth is going to be equal to negative uh, 101.56 times 10 to the sixth meters. And then our asteroid is 222, negative 44, 20 times 10 to the sixth meters. So how do I do this vector subtraction? Since I have these in component forms, the, vec the subtraction of the vector is just going to be the subtraction of the components. So I can write r is equal to the Earth's position in the x-coordinate, 2, 2, 2, minus the, the Earth's position. So it's going to be 2, 2, 2, minus negative 100, so plus 101. This will be minus 44, minus 50. 
and then 20 minus 6, and all that times 10 to the 6 meters. So you'll notice I did a little trick here. Instead of putting the scientific notation in with the component, I factor that out. It's just a number, so I, if, it's a, if I divide everything by that number and then multiply that by number, I didn't change it, and so I did that for both of these. And then when I add them together, I just kept that outside, and you can do that too. So this isn't too hard to do. You can do that. To, and that's my R right here. Then I need to find the magnitude, and I'll just write this out, R magnitude is going to be the square root of rx squared plus ry squared plus rz squared. So this number with that component is rx, this is ry, that's rz. So they're all numbers, I need to square that. And then I need to find r hat. r hat is going to be this vector r divided by the magnitude of vector r. So I'm going to take each one of these numbers and divide by the scalar magnitude and get r hat. Then I can put all those numbers in here to find the gravitational force, and I can put those numbers in here to find the final momentum. And it's a lot of number crunching, right? You can imagine getting your calculator and you know, you're know you going da 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 da. It's a lot of stuff, and no one wants to do all that stuff. I don't want to do all that stuff. So uh, this is where I think it'd be useful to use Python. Python's a great calculator, especially for situations like this. So let's jump over to Python and uh, do this calculation in Python. It's actually pretty easy. I'm pulling my notes over here so I have my numbers. I'm doing it 100% from scratch. Okay, I'm using uh, Web vPython. It's GlowScript vPython. There's a couple different places you can get this. Um, I'll give you a link to this down below, uh, but let's just get started. I didn't, I didn't mention this, but we do have that gravitational constant, G. G is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. So scientific notation in Python, we do e and then the, the exponent, and so that just means times 10 to the negative 11. It's shortcut for that. And then if you, you print that, just to see what it looks like, print g, and we can run it, and you see that it does, it gives the same thing. So it uses that same notation. Um, we don't have, we don't want to put units in the calculation because then if I did that, let's say the units would be Newton meters squared, or yeah, squared per kilogram squared. And then I print G. See, so Python gives me an error because, see down here. It's like, I don't know what all these things are. I don't know the variable N. I don't know the variable M. I don't know hat. I don't know any of those things. So it, it doesn't know those. If you want to include them there, I can put a, a number sign and it becomes a comment. And then uh, Python ignores that. But you don't you don't have to do that. Okay, now let's put in our other values. I'm going to put in Me, the mass of the Earth, is 5.97 times 10 to the 24th. I'm going to leave off the units. Uh, the mass of the asteroid is 7.35 times 10 to the 11th. I'm going to leave off the units. Now my position of the Earth, Re, is going to be equal to the vector, very powerful part here, vector, uh, negative 101, did I put negative on the other one? But that, that's what it says here, negative 101, uh, E6, uh, 50 E6, that's times 10 to the 6, 6 E6, again, I'm not going to put the units. And then let's put our asteroid as vector, I'm going to do this one differently, I'm going to say 222, negative 44, 20, and then times 1 E6. So you can see that if I don't want to write that in each individual part, I can put it as a factor out here just like I did before. And now if I print RA, just so you can see that it does indeed work, there, it put, it put the factor in there. Cool. Okay, uh, one more thing. I don't need the momentum of the Earth because I don't use that anywhere. I do need the momentum of the, of the asteroid. So I'm going to call this PA1 the momentum at the beginning of the time interval. And I'm just going to say it's equal to vector uh, negative 2.95, 8.84, 5 5.89 times 1 E14. And then I need, uh, let's put DT is 5,000. That's my delta T. So let's calculate F net and then we'll update the momentum. So I'm going to say F net is going to be equal to, oh, I need R first. R is, just like we said before, R A 
minus R R E. And I'm going to print that just so you can see that it does indeed work. Print R equals R. And I'll put the units meters. There you go. That's the vector from the Earth to the asteroid. Now I'm going to calculate F net. F net. I'm going to do it all in one line. Negative G times mass of the Earth times mass of the asteroid times norm R. So norm is a built-in function in Python that returns a unit vector. So I don't need to do all the unit vector stuff. I can just use that function and it returns a unit vector. That's another reason that Python is so awesome. Divided by mag r, mag returns the magnitude of a vector. And then I just square it, square in Python is star star. So now I have the net force and I'm pretty much done. If you want to print that out, you can print f net equals f net. You don't have to though, Newtons. And then I can update the momentum. P A two equals P A one plus F net. Make sure you use the same name. F net time T T print P A two equals P A two. Kilograms meters per second. Run. There it is. There's your momentum. And let's save this as uh, asteroid momentum calc. And I'll give you a link. And there you go. So that's not a great test problem. I don't like that as a test problem because the numbers get a little messy, but it is a good problem overall. And that's that.